Okay, I have my 2007 PT Cruiser here and I'm gonna be putting another transmission in this thing. Uh, what we have is it was running excellent, uh, but it has no reverse whatsoever. And I've already got a replacement transmission here and this one only has 20,000 miles on it. So it's gonna make a, a really good replacement. Usually don't find them with this uh, low of miles, but uh, it's a really good deal. You can get these really cheap on eBay. <clears throat> this was about $260, and that's uh, shipping and everything. So we're gonna be going ahead. Uh, now I'm just gonna be going through the bottom. Uh, you pretty much have no room to come out at the top to do anything with these cars. So I'm gonna be dropping uh, the transmission out of the bottom. Now I could drop the whole entire engine out the bottom and roll it out from under there, but um, it's just going to be way more work and it's not necessary. I don't need to do anything to the engine and uh, I don't really want to be doing all that extra work. So we're just going to be dropping the transmission itself out. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, like any other car, we had to start popping the get the wheels and popping the CV axles and everything out and we'll need to get a pan and everything under there um, and drain some fluids and stuff so we're gonna go ahead and first uh, get everything jacked up start getting some jack stands and blocks and everything under here okay so this is what I'm doing on each side I've got blocks and a jack stand I'm just gonna do this on both sides you can see where I'm on the frame here and get up here just got my jack in between those two. Okay, so we're just breaking these loose. I'm using a three quarter because it fits the best. Of course, um, if you're not using the pneumatic, you'll want to break these loose probably before you go to lifting the vehicle up. Now, I just wanted to say a lot of times uh, when stuff goes out on a transmission that people will think that you know maybe you can replace this or that and that it's something simple but in my experience usually it's not anything simple it's um the transmission's messed up and by the time that you go through the trouble of figuring out what it is and replacing this and that um you probably could have went ahead and bought you another transmission a used one so it's up to you Okay, so I'm doing the same thing to both sides. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get it to where I can get the CV axle out. Uh, now the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this uh, entire brake caliper uh, bracket to knuckle. And we've got a couple of 18 millimeter bolts. There's one here and there's one that's down here at the bottom right there. And we're just going to remove these. I can see these brakes look good. Somebody's done some work. Looks like it's got brand new brakes on here. So that's good. So you can check a lot of this stuff out while you're in here. Um, I can see that there's problems with the control arms. And they look horrible. So, uh, you know, the best thing to do with these is just replace it. Uh, look like it may have been replaced at one time. I don't know. It doesn't look just horrible, but that bush in there is uh, just not in good shape. So anyway, we're going to go ahead, and these are going to be really snug. And I could either use my impact. I'd have to turn the wheel, though, to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and get these 18s, this um, upper and lower out, and we'll take and wire this thing up here on the spring somewhere. I got some wire handy here. I just keep this stuff around and we'll just wire it plumb up out of the way so it's not getting damaged. Okay, so we just wired that right through there. Just wired it up there good so it's not falling down on your head. And then we're ready to go ahead and just get our rotor off. And we'll set that aside. And I think the next thing we're gonna go ahead and work on this we'll have to bend this cotter pin and then this will just slide right off we're just going to bend 
these out with some needle nose, straighten it out, and then pull that through and then just slip this uh, anti-spin contraption here off of there. Okay, so just taking this out and <clears throat> don't lose any of these pieces. You got this and then you got a little spring that keeps that like pushed out. Just remember how all this goes on here. Now we'll go ahead and get on this axle nut. Okay, so I've got a 32 millimeter here that fits nicely. And we're just going to get our pneumatic and go ahead and get a hold of this and get this off of here. Um, I said if you're not using a pneumatic, uh, in this case you have to put the wheel back on and lower it and then uh, use a cheater pipe to break it loose. Now I have had somebody hold the brakes and it was enough to break it loose as well. Okay, I've got a 21. We're gonna be removing these that are going into this knuckle and the strut. Uh, I'm gonna be using my impact. Um, now 13 16 is the closest equivalent. Uh, they both fit pretty well. I'm actually using them because I didn't have a 21 wrench. I'm using a 13 16 just to hold the bolt while I break this nut here loose on this side. And like I said, this came off pretty easy. Just got all the pieces set over there. Once we get this loose, we'll spray a little WD-40 and we'll deal with that. And there's also a washer that's on there. You don't want to lose that. Okay, normally I would use my rubber mallet. Um, now these, I can never remember which one of these vehicles has these. They have these grooves that actually bite in when they go in, when they, you know, tighten on from that side. So it's actually better to put your nut back on there flush as you can get it with a bolt. And don't get too carried away, but give it a good, some good metal to metal taps. And like I said, you can see the grooves and you actually don't even have to hold this side because those things will bite in just don't try to you know remove it from this side you're going to break something <clears throat> always remove it from the nut side okay and just wiggle this if those bolts get stubborn and this will just come out. Right, just be careful <clears throat> it is loose it'll want to flop down and the strut is kind of flop down as well we're just going to kind of push it out of there Okay, now we're going to take our rubber mallet. We may have to get some WD-40 on here, but usually it doesn't take a lot. Okay, we've got it loose. And you can go ahead and get this off of here if you like. If it'll come off. But it's loose, and we should be able to uh, push it the rest of the way out. Okay, so we just pulled this down enough here just to slide it out. And uh, even these lower ball joints don't look bad. It's just the uh, bushing up there. Of course, they may have had these replaced but didn't do the other ones which is the reason when i replace these <clears throat> it's cheap and and uh it's just cheaper to buy the whole thing by the time you buy all the bushings and the ball joints you could have bought this whole piece here they're pretty inexpensive nowadays okay and i just went ahead and put all my pieces back on so they're not getting lost put my bolts back up in here as they went so we're just going to be leaving this as it is once we pop this CV out. And I'm going to go ahead and get me a drain pan over here. Okay, so normally I'd use my crowbar in a situation like this. But these aren't too bad. I've just got my a big pry bar here. This is not even the biggest one I've got, but it works nicely. And we're just going to get, kind of come from underneath here. Where you can see that gap right there turn your handle that way so you can fit it back in there like so you're just fitting it you know, there's a collar around this thing that's why if you turn it with the bend that way you can get behind it just rock it a little bit and there it is said so these usually ain't too bad seen a lot worse 
and just said there'll be some fluid coming out. So you got your pan ready. Just use your screwdriver to kind of just get it the rest of the way. Now everything I've removed on uh, both sides been the same up until the point of the CV axle. The CV axle on the other side is a little bit different. It's just a longer version. And there it is. Just make sure to take good care of this and keep, uh, keep this clean. And you see the little split C collar that um, clips it in there. And we'll just let it drip a bit and we'll go ahead and pop that other side off. And we'll say we'll just set this up out of the way for now. Okay, on this side I actually had to spray some silicone grease. It was a little bit more stuck before I could tap it out with the rubber mallet. Now, like I said, this one will have to go crawl underneath. And you can see it's um, way up under there. It's a little bit longer, so we're going to get a little bit of cardboard down here. We're going to go ahead and crawl under the car here. And let's say the biggest thing, you can raise this up as high as you want, but you want to be able to get underneath here to get to some stuff. There's going to be times where you have to get under here to disconnect and get to things. Okay, so we're going on to the front of the car. Keep your drain pan where it can still drip, but it's going to pick up this side. And you can see where we are right here. Very easy to get to this. This is the only thing left holding it we're just going to use our same pry bar and it may not be as much fluid because we just drained out quite a bit on that side but we will have some and you kind of want to get a hand on this here it is all but certain to try to fall so that is loose there and I'm just going to get out here and just pull this out from the outside just get a hand on it Let's see it's ready to come on out but I want to need both hands to grab it so we're just ready to pull it out and so it'll just come right out through this outside we'll just pull it right through there Okay, and here's a view of this one. You can see the, the length distance or the difference. And there's some oil leaking under there, it looks like. It's got a lot of oil on the front of it. Boot. So here they are, side by side. You can see this one's like a foot and a half longer than the other one there on the passenger side but that's basically the only difference you just have to get underneath the car to pop that one out okay so i'm just getting in here removing this air box we've got a vacuum hose here we've got that air duct connector and just lift this whole entire thing out of here uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect our negative here and uh, go ahead and get our positive off and get this battery entirely out of here it's going to be getting in our way okay you've got this tray down here it's got some uh, 10 millimeters just uh, take those all loose get this up out of the way Okay, we're going to go ahead and go back under the car for a bit here. I want to work on this plate that is um, in between here. I went ahead and took, uh, there's a couple 15s that hold this line here for the uh, power steering. And I uh, said so I went ahead and took, the one was missing altogether. We've got that loose. And all we got over here is an 18 right there I'm gonna go ahead and take that out it's a little bit tricky to get this out of here because it's kind of difficult see there's another one right there we'll have to get in there with a ratchet wrench or something 
to get to it because we've got this bracket and everything going into this to hold this piece. So we're going to work on this right now, basically. Okay, so I got a, I said the long 18 off of that side, an even longer one going through this uh, hole right here. This bracket, this thing still won't come out. There's a couple of more bolts, if I can show you, that I'm taking out right up in here. Um, if you can see on this bracket, it's really kind of hard to show you in here. There's a bolt that's uh, hidden behind this. There's one there, and one right there. I've about got them all the way out. They're on this bracket right here, this funny looking thing. <clears throat> so those are 15s, and I'm just taking both of those out. And there's also another one up here, but I don't think we're going to need to remove that just yet for what I'm doing here. So I'm now working on <clears throat> that top 18 millimeter right there. That's kind of difficult because this here bracket um, connects to this, and it's just all. Sometimes things are kind of difficult to remove in the vehicle like this, but you can get to it. And I was going to show you something else when I had it on my mind. Um, this, a lot of these PT cruisers are like so low in the front. You'll notice that this piece up here, and about every PT cruiser I've ever seen, this has been bent on it too. And the only way you can fix this is to just replace this. has got some uh, 13s or something that hold it there and you could just get you another piece from the salvage yard and replace this thing the oems are way stronger than the aftermarket you don't want an aftermarket it'll be worse than this one but anyways what it does it kind of shoves <clears throat> all of your fan stuff up close to the engine and it kind of shoves the radiator and everything up so you don't have any room to work up there and I can show you what I'm talking about when you look up here you can see that these are the top of the radiator it's supposed to have some rubber pads and this thing's shoved up so far that it can't go any farther <clears throat> so that's something that kind of needs to be dealt with because it kind of shoves and crams everything up but it's like so common because they're low in the front. If you hit a curve or hit something, that's all it takes and it's bent. Okay, so I've determined a swivel with a long extension works better for getting this right, uh, getting that top 18. I'm gonna have to get a hand on this thing because I probably should have took this loose first because this is all just gonna try to fall down here. But the swivel and extension's working out real nicely for getting to this top one. Okay, so I was incorrect. There is one more bolt up here. Right there, if you can see that, it's right down there on the end. Point my finger at it. It's really hard to. Right there it is. There's actually three bolts in that. Now, why they bolted this thing so much, I don't know. I remember taking this off before it was kind of a pain but it's what you got to do to get to this middle piece to get it out okay well that final boat loosened up I don't need to take it all the way off um, this just comes falling down here and now we've got this space cleared up and as you can see we can get to our flex plate or torque converter bolts there and there's the first one right there now we'll have to get over on the crank which means we'll have to take off this plastic flap and get it out of the way it's usually just got some plastic snaps and a few 10 millimeters holding it in various places and this one's Looks like most of them has been lost. So there's like one up there holding it. 
couple snaps here and there and it's ready to come completely off so we'll go ahead and get this out of the way and get a socket on our crank up here to hold it and get us a wrench down here these will be pretty snug as well but I want to go ahead and get these out while it's in the vehicle because it's up here where they're easy to reach and uh, when I go to unbolting it um, I don't have to worry about my torque converter trying to pull off or anything but regardless we've got to get these out so we're going to go ahead and get these and then we'll work on them. We've got some of the bolts out. Now you want to make sure to mark and take Pay particular attention to where these bolts come from so you don't get them mixed up. And you can, you know, mark them, label them, whatever you need to do, just so you know where they go. Okay, so to remove these flywheel bolts, I've got my extended handle wrench over here. I kind of got it wedged. That's a, uh, so it was an 18, I think. 18 or a 19 can't remember but um this space in here is really narrow i don't know how wide your socket wrench is but um i was having trouble fitting in with my 3 8 <clears throat> so i've got several of these i just took and ground down this 18 millimeter and i'm breaking it loose with this and uh, then I'm just getting it the rest of the way with a wrench. Now, the problem with trying to remove it with this, you can't really get in there properly. I got this line right in my way. But you can't get in there because of the distance here. And what you're going to wind up doing is stripping your little bolt off. So I tried that with the wrench. And it did that first thing. So that's not going to work. You're going to strip them and they're going to be useless. So... If you can get a 18 millimeter that's a little bit stubbier, it's preferable. I didn't have one handy, so I ground this down. And now, as you can see, I can fit in there barely, but I can fit in there. And I can grind it more if I need to. I just got tired of grinding. So that's how we're doing it. And there's four of them, and these are really tight. Like I said, I'm putting this up in here, and I'm getting a cheater bar on that. And I got this wedged. So we're just going to continue on here and get the other three. Okay, so there's those four out of there. And you're going to say to yourself, yeah, these are really tight. Why would they put these so tight? Because some of them are really snug in there. But we got those out, and we're just going to work on getting some more of the lower bolts from the transmission loose before we get... We'll leave the top ones in, obviously, you know, before we get too carried away with it, we'll have to get our um, get our cherry picker hooked up and get some other things uh, situated. But we're just going to work on some more bolts on the bottom right now. Oh, and here's this bracket that goes on the bottom that makes sense. And see, this takes care of three bolts going into the transmission. You got one here, got one here. And then we're up top these 18s. <clears throat> and this was, like I said, it goes on there like that, bolts into that piece. And then you have these 15 millimeters hidden up here on the side, holding that piece. So that takes care of these three going in, holding the transmission. We got like 11, I think, all together. Okay, so the next one we've got, I believe, an 18 that's right up here. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to get over here. We actually took care of this one and this one and this one. There's three down here. And the next one's up. We've got, you can see the starter. We're going to need to get those. So I'm going to leave the top ones. And I'm probably going to go ahead and get um, get a support up here. I'm going to be uh, lowering this. I'm just going to use a jack to lower this down. But we don't want to get too carried away with it. But we're going to leave the top bolts and just get these down here. Like I said, I got one up there. 
that's got to come out. We're going to go ahead and take care of that one. We're going to take care of this bottom starter. And uh, that's about all we can do from down here. We've already got the torque converter loose, so we're good on that. So uh, then we'll just focus on uh, supporting this, uh, supporting our engine, and uh, then we'll work on, work on everything up top. We'll get our uh, transmission mount there loose and work on getting everything else loose from the top side, getting the other bolts out. And there's not very many left. <clears throat> Okay, just to show you where we're at over here on this one, it's easy. I'm putting these bolts back in there too. And it's a good idea if you got a replacement transmission, check all your threads. You don't want to run into problems when you go to bolting it up. And I can tell this one right here, it's kind of rusty. I'm hoping that'll clean up. But I just took this one out, it's over the top of this CV. So we're left with one, two, and three. And I just took this bottom one out of the starter. So I've just got three bolts that are holding the transmission, plus it's got the, the transmission mount there. So we're going to go ahead. What I'm going to do is uh, get me a support, a jack stand or something under the engine, and I'm going to rig up my lift onto the transmission. I've got some more stuff to remove up there, but that's how many bolts that we have left. It's not very difficult. Okay, and I was just removing <clears throat> these four 15 millimeters on this red bracket you see right here. And this, uh, with this out of the way, it's going to clear up a lot more room to do stuff down here. So it's kind of tricky to get to those, but um, you can get to it. And with that out of the way, we can actually get in here to get to a lot of different stuff a lot easier we can get to these lines we can uh, figure out what's the easiest way to remove some of this we got this some of this harness which as i said there's not a lot we've got you can see the top bolt to the starter right there we've got um, another one there and then we got another one right over here behind that you see my finger pointing there's a 18 there so 15 on the starter and a couple more 18s up top and that's all it's holding this and then of course we've got our our uh, transmission mount here so it's getting pretty dark uh and the bugs are getting bad so we're just going to go ahead and uh, call it a day and we'll just get started back on it first thing in the morning okay so i'm just taking this pan off it's already been drained <clears throat> but uh, you have to put a new filter with any of these and you got to engage the torque converter etc there's a list of stuff that you have to do <clears throat> but this is the seal that came with it I don't ever use these I had a bad experience uh, these things like get real hard and brittle and they want to leak and I can even show you on the car over there um, when it's lied out <clears throat> and it's it's leaking now and that's like all these things do I never use them <clears throat> just get some gray RTV and and put on there and it's um, it doesn't leak ever <clears throat> so here's the new the new filter it just got an o-ring we'll just put a little bit of transmission fluid around it pop it on there just pops right into place. There's a couple of locating pins on here. Uh, we're just going to get that one off and throw it away. And we'll work on cleaning up the surface real good with some uh, cleaner, brake cleaner, whatever. Clean up the surface real good. Same thing here. We'll take and <clears throat> scrape that off with a putty knife and clean it up real good. And we're going to get some, some ultra gray. And it looks like they're using ultra black either one will work <clears throat> but um, I just don't like the uh, the rubber seals the cork ones work fine and I've used uh, one of the five ones but honestly I prefer the RTV I mean 
<clears throat> it works perfect. Uh, it's a little more trouble when you change your filter, having to scrape it off, but it's not that bad. But you don't have to worry about these leaks and stuff with it. And I mean, that's how they seal everything up. Factory, they, they use this RTV and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that away. We're gonna pop this new one on, start cleaning this up a bit. So we got a little bit of fluid on there. Just getting ready. Make sure you remove the old one. Sometimes it'll stick in there. See the little locating pins, they kind of lock it. Got some little teeth. So when you get it on there, you'll you'll know it. It'll lock itself down into place. And there you have it. Okay, I just went and uh, scraped these surfaces up really good. Um, and we cleaned them with some cleaner. And I'm just getting ready now to go ahead and I want to put the uh, RTV onto this surface. We'll get a good bead all the way around and we'll go ahead and just finger tighten the bolts. Okay, so we got a good bead all around this I'm just getting ready to set it on okay so we just got them barely finger tightened on down and we'll just let this set up for about four four hours okay so i'm just using these little spreader pliers and i popped that shifter cable off there it just pops up and off it is on there pretty good you know it's meant to not come popping off so you could put a little uh, WD-40 or something on there if you need to but we got that loose and back here you can see where it goes into that bracket we need to get it where it'll slide through and you just have you can see the little flange is on the side there you just push those in and this will push back through there so if you reach back in here and you push on these side and you got to push them on both sides you can see them it's got one on each side you got to push them all the way in and then slide it through so that's um, good enough for the moment but mainly we just need to have that loose when we go to lowering this thing down so, uh, and we're going to probably just get along this bracket here, and um, I think this is going to be in my way also. I'm just going to pop it out of here real quick. It's just, I'm not going to move the fuse box, but I don't want anything in my way. I'm going to get a chain down here on my cherry picker and, and uh, get enough slack to lower it. <coughs> um, we're going to need to get this, our dipstick for uh, the transmission fluid we're going to need to get that off of there before we go to popping it out the bottom we got some wires here we're going to have to reroute and disconnect um, got one right here 10 millimeter we're going to disconnect these lines up here and all these sensors basically we're going to start popping these out get everything disconnected and when we get the other one in we can just go to reconnecting everything back I still got the bolts in up at the top, two 18s and a 15 on the starter. They're easy to get to. So I'm just working on some of these things. And uh, once we get everything that I need disconnected from the transmission, then we'll get over here with a chain and hook to this and see about lowering it down. Now, one thing about it, um, we're going to have to make sure when we go to separating this that we make sure the, the torque converter separates from the flex plate because sometimes it hangs up when you're removing it and it makes a really big mess. <clears throat> so we don't want that to happen. All right, I just took those two loose and you can see I just pulled this up here out of the way. I've got this one going to the positive that runs into the box we're just going to disconnect it here it's not a bad idea to label stuff like this so you don't get confused later but 
you see with that loose we can pull this with the whole wire harness and everything we just flip it up here completely out of the way and then we got all this room here uh, without having to uh, worry about hitting or damaging that so I'm just gonna take it loose here and we'll just flip it up out of the way okay so I'm uh, disconnecting a few wires to come to these lines these are quick disconnects um, they have a little clip on there and you just pull you get a little pick tool and you push that clip back a little bit and you just pull those out of there you can see the clip right there you just have to get under it and push it back a little bit you can pull it completely off if you want just don't lose it but um, you just kind of pull those up and they just slide right off there you don't have to unscrew these things okay and there's what that looks like just make sure don't lose those okay so we put those um, cooler lines out of the way I put some tape around them just to keep them from dripping and uh, we've just left those on there I just realized that the these aren't on the replacement transmission so I will have to remove these they're like a pipe fitting so just put them on there and snug them down <clears throat> and I'm just labeling some of these so doesn't get mixed up I'm getting ready to remove that's a eight millimeter I'm just getting ready to remove that and then pull that out of there and uh, once I get that I'm gonna get this other connection down here and I'll have most everything I need looks like from this side Okay, I wanted to point this out to save you from breaking some connectors. Some of these have these red locks, like this one. You have to push back before you can push in and release. And this one here, same way, you got to push that lock over to the right before you can push it and get it to release. So we've got, looks like all of these connections uh, we're going to have to get this uh, dipstick. We've got a, well, it's the one going into the starter, the 15, right there. Once we get that now, we'll be able to wiggle that uh, dipstick up and out of there. So, uh, looks like we've got most everything we need over here. We've got this loose. And we can push it back. Just definitely don't want to forget and leave that connected. We'll just push it back out of the way for now. And looks like that's everything. So other than moving this, this is connected. It's got tabs that are connected here holding this and it's got one here as well um, but we don't need to remove that because it's on a little bracket there we're just gonna when we take those off this will come loose from this so we don't need to remove that <clears throat> so and then once we um, say so once I've got everything I need here before I start taking the bolts here for this transmission mount will get a chain on this just so it's not flopping and falling on me so we're just about there I just want to get everything before I get the lift over here in my way you can see up here see that shouldn't be this close it's almost hitting but it's because that brace I was showing y'all earlier on the bottom got hit and it's very very common if you've ever hit a curve or anything it that's all it takes to bend those okay so I took out the other starter bolt and went ahead and just pulled the dipstick straight up and out of there the starter is loose and we could probably just set it right there for now it should be fine Okay, I'm getting my lift in a position. I have a jack stand under here that is going 
to be positioned under the engine just to keep it from falling. I've raised this up and uh, measured it with a tape measure just to make sure I've got enough distance here that I can lower this once I get a chain on it. I got enough distance to lower it and set it down on the ground here. And these only weigh like, I think 225 pounds, easy to drag around. You can put a piece of cardboard down and just drag this thing out from under here. And if the vehicle isn't high enough, it's no big deal. We'll just jack it up a little bit more or we can drag it out from under there. Okay, I'm gonna attach right here. There's a bracket, there's a bolt that goes right in here. This is the one, this black one that came out. I'm gonna use one slightly longer. You could use this one. I've got a big washer on there. I wanted to get one with a little bit more links to it. But uh, it doesn't take a lot to hold this. We're just gonna go ahead and connect the chain right there okay so there we have it that seems to be as good a place as any it's kind of in the centerish sorta of, of the weight and we've just got it looped around or hook and put a bolt through up here and I've just raised it up put a little bit of tension on it here so um, I think at this point I'm gonna go ahead and um, see about working on these uh, probably going to go ahead and get these motor mount bolts and then and then work on those top bolts there I worry about if I release the tension here it kind of like wanting to uh, put stress on the transmission okay so here's these two motor mount bolts I took out right here and I would just suggest when you're taking things apart, try to keep the bolts where they go so you're not having a whole bunch of bolts sitting around and you can't remember where they went. So I always try to put um, any bolts back exactly where they go so there's none laying around and there's no confusion. So it's my lift is holding it at this point. Um, we've got our jack stand setting on the oil pan there holding that and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and just get my 18 up here and we're gonna get these two right here okay so I've just got these two out of the way you can see that the wire harness is now free and I've got the right amount of tension on here this thing didn't try to drop down or anything so now we're going to go ahead and work on carefully separating it we have to make sure that the torque converter stays in the um, transmission there so we're either going to go underneath or look through the starter hole here okay so we're good on the torque converter it actually stayed where it was supposed to stay you can see in there at all but it did separate without hanging up sometimes if you get it straight enough you don't have to worry with that and now uh, we've got the fun task of working this thing down and hope that we're it looks like we are clear enough with the flex plate at this point um, but we have to be careful we don't want to damage anything. We don't want to damage the flex plate. We don't want to damage anything else. So we have to make sure that we've got enough clearance here as we're going down with this. Okay, so I'm lowering it down here. And of course this frame's over here, so I'm having to kind of keep it pulled over as I'm lowering it. <clears throat> now the only thing I can see about putting the placement back in, I'm going to have to put some cardboard on the front of that that fly uh, flex plate and keep the face of my transmission protected or I may put the cardboard on the face of the transmission itself because there's not a lot of room with fitting it in here and trying to lower it down now another thing you could do which I really don't want to do um, we could get in here and take this this brace off of this um, radiator and kind of push the radiator and maybe get um, 
get the bumper off and clear up some more room but I'm trying to not having to do any extra work and as far as getting the old one out I don't really care about this one but I'm definitely gonna have to be cautious getting the new one in okay so we about got it down completely and stuff so I got plenty of room to lower here is a view through the side I so said other than that frame there's really it's not a big deal at all you just got to keep it pulled back away from that flex plate so it's not damaging it and we're almost all the way down I put some cardboard under here because it's twice as hard to drag if you don't have some cardboard down so uh, we're just going to go ahead and lower it on down on this and we'll drag it out from under the car Okay, we got it completely lowered. I'm just getting ready to drag this out from under the car and we'll just get the other one over here and just do it the same way. We'll have to push it under the car. Okay, so I've just been prepping this a little bit. <clears throat> Took a um, flat file, went around the face of this all the way around, just laid it down flat, went around it, <clears throat> and there was several nicks which is pretty common but you want to definitely take care of that don't get carried away with it. just knock the nicks and stuff down I also took um, all the bolts and made sure that they were going to thread through the threaded holes on here <clears throat> and even the ones for the um, transmission mount so definitely I've learned the hard way, way on that you want to make sure your threads are good I've also checked all of the threads on the torque converter there the last thing you want <clears throat> is to get um, transmission in the car and realize you've got a problem where it's going to be um, really really hard for you to fix those threads if they have to be fixed and by the same token you want to check and make sure there's not any snapped off uh, bolts or anything which I've also run across that and didn't catch it so now I check all the threads and, and everything to make sure they're they're good to go so uh anyways we're going to get ready now i'm <coughs> just going to hook on to the same spot using this bolted place right here just hook the chain on and we're going to use that and just do it the same exact way okay so i just transferred these quick connects over from the other transmission and I just went ahead and put the little clips on there. They just clip on there like that. And then those lines will snap right in. Okay, so I just um, dragged it over here. I'm going, we're going to go right back through here so we have clearance. And I'm just, gonna, I'm just pushing it in. And once we get it into position, we'll um, hook our chain up. We got it ready to go. We'll hook it up to the lift. You'll notice I got a piece of cardboard on the front of the transmission there. And going to be using that as a precaution so I'm not nicking anything up, getting it back in here. Because it's kind of a tight squeeze because of the frame. And um, you could drop that down, but I don't feel like messing with all that. Just a lot of extra work. All right, so I'm having to kind of come up at an angle here. And once I get over this part back here, then I'll work it up. I'm having trouble keeping my cardboard on because it doesn't want to stick to this greasy transmission. Okay, so I've worked it up, keeping the cardboard in there so I'm not scratching the flywheel or the face. And I've about got it in the position I'm a little bit higher than I need to be but it's because it's um, I'm not exactly centered with this and it's just not perfectly angled so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to like push down on the front as I work it into position and um, like I said now I'm just gonna have to get the cardboard out I'm pretty close to this point here and just make sure you don't have any wires or anything that's going to be in the way. And we got to line up our dial pins. You can see that one right down there. That's got to line up. 
and we got another one over here below this starter it's kind of hard to see but those have to line up and we need to get those try to get those bolts in there uh, you can put one in the top to kind of hold it but we want to try to get those lined up before we go to cranking any other bolts down okay so i've pulled it up here um <clears throat> now i've just started those top two bolts the 18s right there we've just gotten them started is all i've done for now um what i had to do is get under here because this thing twisted on me i had to get a jack at the front of this pan here and twist that transmission back around so I can get kind of get those bolts uh, started. Make sure that you um, can thread them by hand. You don't want to cross thread these things. <clears throat> and another thing I want to point out when you put your go to put your transmission in, make absolutely sure that you got the torque converter. where it bolts, uh, you know, in the middle right there so you can line your flex plate up. Otherwise, you're gonna be having to figure out how to turn it. <clears throat> so, make sure it's, you know, about down there in the middle so you can turn your flex plate and get it to line up. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is get a couple of bolts started into the, um, place where the dowel pins are which is here and there's another one over here on that side up there at the top you see above the where the red cap is right up there we're going to get those started because those have the dowel alignments so we want those to be started first to make sure that we're not going to have any problems and then we'll be able to put the other bolts in absolutely no issue now i'm going to be using uh, medium loctite on all these bolts um, i usually don't fuss around with a torque but as a rule of thumb if uh, on the smaller boats i'll go 35 the larger ones 45 uh, the main thing is you just want to err on the side of caution you don't want to be snapping bolts off Okay, so now we're just gonna, I've got those two bolts with the dowel pins. Now I'm just going through and we're gonna lock tight each one of these. The ones um, that I got in there temporarily, I'll have to remove and put some lock tight. But said you want to, uh, you get these up here started to kind of just get it in line, but then get your dowel pin um, bolt started so you know you got everything pulled together nicely and in alignment so i'm going to get locked tight on this other one over here and uh we'll go ahead and probably pop this starter back on while we're up here and um then we'll get the work on getting the bolts into the brackets down on the lower part don't forget to slap your ground wire back on when you're putting that top starter bolt back in. Okay, I'm just getting ready to get my flex plate bolts in now. Got I'm using some high strength on these. And we're just going to get under here. And I uh, like to get them all started. And just kind of barely tighten them. until I get every one of them started because then you can't get them to line up if you snug them down. So we're just gonna barely tighten them down and just rotate it around and get locked tight on each one. Okay, so I've just went through and we tightened all those bolts going to the torque converter. Um, if you're gonna torque them, go no more than 20, 25 foot pounds. I just snug mine down really tight and use lock tight. I couldn't get my torque wrench in there if I wanted to so um, we got those we're going to go ahead and replace this piece down here and um, 
I will say, I don't need, it seems like I've removed this bracket before because it's such a pain to, to get in on and off. Um, I don't even really know what the purpose of it is, but it's just, it makes it just way more trouble. It gets in the way of getting your starter off. But um, I'm getting ready to put this lower piece that covers all this back down here. And uh, then we'll go back up top and see if I get our motor mount reconnected. And uh, it's be, that'll be about it as far as this goes. We've got everything else buttoned up. We'll have to get our wires up there. Okay, so we just replaced this piece here and this bracket here. And uh, it takes a little bit of time to put this bracket in just because of the difficulty to get to the boats uh, with the room you have here. So anyways, we've got this. Now we're ready to go back up top. Everything is snug down down here. Okay, so we've got our upper bolts locked tied it in. I'm just getting ready to line this up and get our motor mount and it's pretty close i can look down through there and i can see that it's lined up pretty close i'm just going to need to lift it up just slightly and i've uh, still got my lift here connected we're just going to use that to pull it up a little bit more okay so we got our motor mounts tightened down and we can go ahead and remove our our lift here now and we can even take our jack stand everything out from under everything is pulled up now we don't need any support and we're just going to go ahead and start making our connections here doesn't take very long we'll get our lines back on okay i was just snapping these lines back on it's just that easy just push them straight on and put the little dust cover back on <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and just get our connectors back into place here and just got a few of them and we're just about to get everything for the most part buttoned up we have to get our, our uh, eight millimeter and tighten that back down okay i'm putting the dipstick in i had to take the bolt for the starter back out because it bolts right here through the little starter hole so I'm just working on getting this bolted in I've pushed it down into place okay so we're just moving along I've snapped the shifter cable back down on here we just run it through this bracket it's got a couple little fins that lock it into place we've got our connectors and everything up here we've got our lines on so all this is good now we just need to work on getting our bracket back in there for a battery and getting our box back down here and get that reattached. Okay, so we just got the battery bracket back on. Got a couple bolts on each side. Okay, and right now I'm just reconnecting this wire to this positive cable. I'm going to snug that 10 millimeter down. Okay, we're just securing the battery tray back in here with the 10 millimeters. Okay, and before we do anything else up here, we're going to go ahead and start working on popping these CV axles back into place and getting the wheels on. Okay, so we're going to start over here on the driver's side, take you some clean transmission fluid and make sure that your seal is nice and uh, lubricated. You don't want to put these in dry. Um, so we'll get on that passenger side here in just a second. Uh, I would st uh, say that you would always want to put new CV axle seals in here. Um, this is such a low mild transmission i'm going to try these uh, but if you know if i have a problem i'll just pop them out and put some new ones but normally um, i always put new ones in it's just not worth having to mess with but in this case i looked at them and they look really good so i may not worry about these we'll see what happens so we're just going to go in through here we got this ready we're going to take and put some 
use this lithium grease on the spline. It keeps these things from seizing up in the future. Okay, if you don't have one of these heavy rubber mallets, shot filled, get you one. It's definitely worth it. And we're going to hit this thing on the end, and it's going to knock it right into place in there. I've just got it set in there. We're just going to give it a couple really good hits. One good hit knocked it right in. Now we're going to go ahead and feed this back into our bearing here, our knuckle. Okay, once we got that going, we'll go ahead and get our bolts in here so this is not moving. And we'll get our nut and everything on here, washer, and it'll pull itself right on through. And uh, we'll snug it up. Give these a tap with your hammer to get the spline started. And then just go ahead and get your that's on each side and it'll pull it on down I'm going to be using an impact and the same for tightening my axle nut I'm just going to use the impact on it it's going to get it plenty tight enough so we get the washer get our nut back on and then we'll get that snug down and remember that once you get it tightened this here piece goes on <clears throat> like this and then you put the little castle make sure it lines up with the hole on there when you push it down and then get your cotter pin back into there and then bend the tabs on it that's all there is to that I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up with my impact and get my axle nut tightened up. Okay, so we've got this tightened down and got our cotter pin and everything on. This is snugged down. Just getting ready to get our um, brake bracket back onto the knuckle here. It just slides right in front of it. And we've got our bolts here ready to go. I'm going to put some medium thread locker on these. And um, then I'm going to get over to the passenger side and we'll get that CV axle. I said it goes without saying if you, you know, before you fill your transmission, make absolutely sure you got your CV axles in, all the seals and everything. Make sure you got your, your pan torqued down to about 70 inch pounds and everything's buttoned up before you go to pour, pouring the fluid in. Okay, so we've got the rotor, the caliper on. I'm just getting ready to snug these up. And these are 17s, I do believe. Okay, they're 18s, correction. Okay, we're just going to slap the wheel back on. We'll be done over here on this side. And then we're going to go over and get that passenger side CV axle in. Okay, so we're getting ready to slide the longer one in from the passenger side. So I just put you some white silicone or some kind of grease on this so it's not seizing up in there. <clears throat> and we're just going to work it right in through here. And then I'm going to crawl underneath and uh, finish hooking it up. And then we'll get out here and do it the same way that we did the other. We'll just take our rubber mallet and um, and finish knocking it in. It doesn't take much. And like I said, make sure to put um, transmission fluid on your CV axle seal. Okay, once you get it knocked in there, you'll know it. You can go under and confirm it too. Just go under and look and see if the gap looks right. And uh, so it usually it doesn't take but a couple good hits and it goes right in. Now I'm going to just do the exact same thing that I did <clears throat> on the other side. So I'm uh, just going to go ahead and get this wheel on and then we'll follow up. Okay, so we've got our wheels on and everything and we're getting ready. I'm just going to go ahead and start putting some transmission fluid in here. And we're going to check for leaks. Um, everything's snugged down. The pan and everything. And um, You don't want to go more than 70 inch pounds, 80 at the most on those bolts uh, people over tighten them all the time 
and all it does is strip them out and make them useless and if you're lucky you can get away with sealing it with RTV if not you're gonna have to go through and retap and drill a size up and redo every one of them so anyways fixing to get some fluid in here we're gonna check for leaks okay so you'll need to get you some ATF plus four I'm gonna start off with uh, getting four quarts in here before I go any farther than that Okay, I've got four quarts in there. I'm going to go ahead. I got the battery back on. I'm going to crank it up at this point. And we're going to recheck and just see about where we're at. Run it through some gears here. Okay, so we've got it running here now. I've put six quarts in here actually. I still don't have enough. So I'm going to have to get some more and put in here. But it is, I've just been running it through the gears and it is. Uh, working in every gear so far but i still just need to get a little bit more fluid in it before i can take it down the road but um, so far everything's working pretty good here and we're just going to get it tested out here shortly okay so i've now gotten seven quarts in it and i'm having to wait and let it run down to get an accurate measurement but so far i don't have any leaks or anything so i think i'm going to go ahead and get it down on the ground so I'm just running it through the gears and then I want to go ahead and get it down the ground actually run it uh, down the road and see if I can get a more accurate reading I don't want to get it overfilled because I don't have to take some out okay so I've took this down the road several times you probably can't see this on the dipstick but I've got it right it's at the bottom of the hot mark and I just added the rest of what little bit I had in that quart. So I've gotten eight quarts in this all together. And uh, I've got it about where I want it now. If I add any more, it'll be just kind of touch and go. I'm going to you know, drive it some more and just make sure because I don't want to overfill it. But I've got it where it should be right in the middle now. But it's testing out good and... You know everything's working as it should all right so that's going to conclude this video on replacing the transmission said it um, did get dark on me but that's the way this uh, adding this fluid is it's uh <clears throat> you know you got to run it and test it and run it and test it and uh, I said I wound up using <clears throat> eight of these total because <clears throat> they actually drain out quite a bit uh, when they ship these things there's not much left in there so it took eight quarts total to get it filled back up but um, anyways that's going to conclude the video I uh, hope you found it helpful if you did give it a like and as always I invite you to subscribe and I thank y'all for watching